What up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode here on the Jimmy Dukes Gaming Podcast. We have a special, special, long-awaited guest on our show. What up, Mr. Nats? How are you, brother? I'm doing well, sir. Thank you for having me on your podcast. This I've... is pretty cool. It's like returning the favor. I brought you on mine. Now I'm on yours. Yeah, man. It, it, it's cool because I, I did yours a couple of months back, I want to say, and you were already in the swing of of knocking out these uh, podcasts and talk shows you've been doing on a regular basis, man. Yeah, the grind's real. We're doing a lot more than most people would when it comes to a talk show podcast, but we're having fun doing it. I know that's cool. That That's the... the. I remember when we first spoke about it and we were in uh, Doc's... Uh, cycling with Doc. Shout out Cycling with Doc. We were in, in his chat room and he had just bridged the 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 cube the I guess just each other like hey John wants to do something and then you're already kind of doing this so it was cool that it's been more than a year ago that we talked about sitting down and having this conversation. Oh, absolutely! It's a long time coming. I mean, shout out to Cycling Doc. He introduced me a lot of new people in the streaming community and. I gave me the hunch. Hey, I need to get my button gear and get going. Now, I know that's cool, man. Because I remember you're like, "Hey, I I, I want to have this podcast or show, but I'm just waiting for some things to go through." And it finally went through for you, man. And you've already been at it for how long? It'll be a year next Tuesday. Dang, and that's cool because not a lot of people know when it comes to live streaming, everybody assumes video games. You, I've just been straight talk show and podcast this whole time, right? I did a couple. Fortnite streams in the beginning, but not like the setup I have now. That's down in my basement. Like I got the dual monitor the setup going. I feel professional now. Yeah, there you go. Well, you are professional. So give us a quick little background about yourself. Like, uh, you know, how did how did you get your interest in wanting to do something like this, this project or this talk show? Oh, well, it all started. You can thank COVID because everyone's isolated. <laughs> can't really go out. Yeah. Uh, plus, plus, like. I've always been a sports fanatic. My parents laugh at me for the, the useless knowledge when it comes to sports I know. I've always liked movies. So I figured, why not try to give a show towards different topics like video games and movies and stuff like that and see how many people would actually be interested in like tuning into it. Yeah. And and, and more, more uh, and I like that you say that because you don't, you go into sports and you guys have some trivia nights and... You guys do talk about games, and you have different people on. So, how did you come up with the name? Like, what what was? How did the basement show come up with? Oh, the first time we actually did a recording was in my basement. Nice. <laughs> the, room, <laughs> the room I'm in now is actually what they consider a bonus room in my house. So I had a roommate at the time when I first started it. I so we started down here, and I was like, you know, this sounds good as the basement show because that's where it started, the basement show. That's but it wasn't actually originally the first name. Uh huh. But that's what you went with. Yeah, that was what you went with after you ended up just doing this yourself, kind of thing. Or was it a joint project and it just ended up just being you later? Oh, well, I came up with the idea. And then when we first started, I had two other people on board who were going to help me with it. But then life got busy. They had other priorities. So it kind of shuffled around. I brought more and more people on to find placements for them and i found a group i have now nice that's cool yeah you do mention that you do have other folks that come on on a regular basis for you know your sports talks or your trivia nights so how did uh so you were talking about covid i think everybody can can uh relate to that because that's when i started streaming and doing content was more because of the covid stuff so did you see a show that that that, that sparked that interest and you're like what you know i want to do this just hanging out in different multiple streams like Cyclone Doc, uh, Coach Clay TV, like they all stream like gaming and stuff, but like sort of the interacting part, part of it as well. And I was like, I'm not much of a video gamer, but I could probably develop a talk show that would bring people in that just want to hang out and chat. Nice. So that, that's cool that you, even though you were looking at other people doing whatever they were in their lane, it sparked an interest in you. Like, you know what? I want to do it this way because I don't see. A lot of people kind of doing what you guys have got going on, man. And you guys are pretty damn consistent. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, like I said, it'll be a year next Tuesday. And I think over the course of the first year, we've only had to cancel maybe four shows up to what happened in May. 
I wouldn't really go into much detail about that, but when May hit, we had to take two weeks off, but that was for a family matter. Yeah. Other than that, we've only canceled four shows in a year. Yeah, and, and, and what does your streaming schedule look like? You're a Monday through Friday guy or a couple days a week? Like, what does what your schedule look like right now? Well, the show's Monday through Friday. Well, Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock, every single night. Me personally, I'm only right now on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday because I have other people who I let have Tuesday and Thursday to do their own thing. That's I cool. I surrender show, yeah. but I'm not on camera. Yeah, okay, okay. So that's that's cool. So you have other people in your team that you know focus on two other shows during the week and you're on three other shows uh during the week correct yes monday wednesday and friday nice i like because i know that i've popped in a couple times and i've kind of like you know kind of seen what the schedule was like but i did always see that you have the rotation of uh the trivia the talk show style and then um the sports talk of course depending on uh what sports you guys are talking about so you know, who are those other, if you want to shout them out, say what's up to them as well for, for being a part of the the journey that you guys got going on. Hey, yeah, well, um, the first one you can thank is Morgan Peak. He uh, hopped on a Tuesday night, just messing around with a whole entertainment night concept, like this, like Mad Libs, telling jokes, stuff like that. And Ron came about through a friend of his, Mike, who was helping me before. We invited Ron to join us on a sports night. It just blossomed from there. Nice. And then my friend Shannon and her husband Alan, I've known them for a very long time. And we had brought them on for couples night back in May. They had a lot of fun. Then we had that little low in time off. Then Shannon became more of a mainstay on Tuesday night with Morgan. Cool. And then Alan, or as we call him on the show, the Rev Grimm, had been on a show before. I kind of branched out and said, hey, if you don't want to do that show anymore, would you want to jump over to the basement show and you can have your own segment? Nice. That's cool. So uh, you 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 pretty much have like uh, set up a platform for different shows to be successful without you even actually being there because of the people that you're you're um, collaborating with. They're pretty, you know, pretty uh, obviously they they've been showing up. So that's a good thing because <laughs> it's. Okay. It's hard to it's hard to produce a show and and have people set in place if they're not consistent or showing up. So and they have been. Yeah, I mean, we always say though, life comes before the show. So if something comes up, just shoot me a message or just put it in our group chat. Hey, I can't be on tonight, and that's nine it. Out of ten times it'll be me jumping on. So. Yeah, that's cool. I I respect the the fact that you guys have communicated and and how it just kind of small conversations had led to all these little small shows and projects, man. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a grind. Yeah, <laughs> just like anything else, man. And, I, and I've and i seen you upgrade over time and do more things and, uh, you know, reach out to different uh, people to, to have on your show, man. So I respect what you guys got going on over there. But I, for, for and I always ask this to content creators or, or people who are in, you know, social media, do you feel like uh, this is like a more for fun thing or do you feel like it can lead to potentially being uh, financially something they can bring into your life? Like, do you pursue it just for fun or do you see it possibly being like a business or something that you could actually financially benefit from? Well, when you first started, obviously it's all for fun. We all know that when you start streaming, like you don't know who's going to adapt to it, who's going to watch. But yeah, it's just meant to be fun. But if that second aspect, the the financial cue comes into it, and you see that growth, and you see that people are actually invested in it, then yeah, you want to jump for the financial thing. But on my end of it, I'm just enjoying it. It gives me something to do. I live by myself. But Monday through Friday, I'm, as a homebody I am, you'll find me in my basement. Nice. And, <laughs> That's cool. That's a good way to think about it, because a lot of people, they don't, they they see numbers, they see money, and then they automatically feel like that's the goal but you saying hey i'm having fun i'm doing i'm doing this regardless if not and if it leads to that certain uh opportunity then you'll jump on it if not hey monday through friday we're hanging out yeah pretty much sometimes saturday and sunday too yeah you never know we do do pop up we call them shenanigan shows on the weekends just hanging out bullshit and having fun but yeah, yeah that's cool so like now that you you guys have a steady schedule, you've been doing this almost a year. Like, what are some of the biggest challenges that you guys have with with starting the show and 
and you know keeping the pace that you guys have been I mean, consistency is the, the obviously you want to stay consistent you want if you're going to be live at nine o'clock you want to go live at nine o'clock whether you're ready or not you want to get your show started on time when you say it they are so those people who adequately tune in say, okay nine o'clock where's the show at boom it's on the screen ready to go mm -hmm. so i mean the biggest thing is just you want to stay consistent with what you're doing yeah, so those are the biggest challenges of just making sure everybody is uh, on the same page because you guys have a team. Like, you you're a, you guys are part of a team. Yeah, and I figured the whole team aspect, it takes some pressure off me to be on the camera five nights a week, and it changes it up. Because yeah. when you do a talk show with different varieties, you get tired of seeing the same people night after night. So if you can get other people involved, it gives a change of pace to the show. And you see different people on there, you're more intrigued. Hey, I gotta check this out. Mm -hmm. I like that that formatting is is true because it, in just and I can only relate to you know what I've done with my podcast and gaming. But if you do the same thing over and over again, it gets kind of boring. Or some people were like, ah, it's the same thing as the other night, so it's not that big of a deal for me to miss it. And with myself bringing out different people with different topics outside of content creation and and you know just gaming. I've done better as well because I was willing to kind of like, all right, let me do a little bit more other than the same thing over and over again. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to give your show, podcast, whatever, to different audiences. Not everyone likes sports. Not everyone's going to like movies. Not everyone's going to like a trivia. So if you throw it different nights at different people, you get more of a different type of crowd. So Smart man. I like that because... The fact that I just been talking to people outside of a content creation, it's it given me a breath of fresh air as well and look forward to different conversations. So when I do talk to content creators, I have more for like I have more uh I guess experience in talking to people outside and I might think of different questions or something that they can be different than than all the other people that I've talked to in the content creation world. So I like that you guys do that. We I mean that's what I think is also unique about it because it's a different type of podcast. Usually podcasts, no offense to people who record them, but like when you can do a live talk show, you get that live interaction with people. You get to see what people are thinking or if they have something to say about it, they can interact with you as you go. Yeah, I agree with that because I've, uh, I've you know, a lot of people are like, hey, you're doing podcasts now, that's all you're doing. And I'm like, you're not doing live. I'm like, I love streaming because of what you just said having the reaction living in the moment at the time you know but it's cool that you you maneuvered yourself and we're like we're more of a talk show we do have a podcast kind of style but we do xyz and everything like that so it gives the people the the opportunity to interact because i've been in there and dropped in a couple times and you'll acknowledge people or people are playing the trivia game and or people want to state their opinion on something with the sports and you and you react and people love that I mean, and I think that's why people have gravitated a little bit to check us out more because of that aspect. You're not just sitting there listening to people talking. We want you part of the show. You, the chat fuels us to keep going with these shows. Yeah, that and that makes it so unique because I can't think, and I'm sure there is shows out there, but that I've come across from people that they're not as engaging as much as you guys are because, yeah, people come and go, but I've seen people stay in there the whole time. Like, I'll come in and jump in and out. And people are staying in there playing the trivia the whole time. You know, that's cool. The trivia show just came about probably about two months ago as we were trying to figure out what to do with a Wednesday, Thursday type show. And trivia is always a popular subject. I mean, you could do multiple different levels of trivia and people want to interact and it's a way to have fun too. Yeah. So, so with all this going on, you got this team going, you got the consistency going. And I know you're doing it for fun. But do you feel pressure to be successful in this? Or do you just not look at the numbers and things like that? I mean, I have looked at the numbers. It's awesome to see how much we have grown. But if you get let that get too much in your head, and then you start thinking, okay, I didn't hit that goal this month. I'm kind of bummed out about it. So you don't want to get yourself bummed out about it. You just want to continue having that fun. Because the second you stop having fun, it reflects on you and your body language. And people are going to be able to see on your show, like, okay, this guy's not in it for the fun anymore. He's thinking bigger picture. Yeah. Yeah, because there, there's that, that happy balance for me because 
I tell a lot of people, I tell them, yeah, do it for fun. But at the same time, if you want to be successful, you got to kind of pay attention to what's going on. If you're doing something that it ain't hitting, then it's maybe not a good idea to keep doing it. But I love the fact that you do say that because if you're not having fun and you're doing it just to do it, people can tell. They can read it. Yeah, and they don't come back because they're like, oh, this, this guy's just going through the motions. Like, you can see his body language. He's drained. There are some nights that I don't feel well when I'm doing the show, but I still try to give 110% towards the show. Yeah, because you look forward to every day, right? You look forward to doing it. The times that you are on, you look forward to doing it. Oh, even if I'm not on it. Like, tonight, I'm uh, on entertainment night. It's my friends Morgan and Shannon, but I'll still go in and make a reel or something to promote that show to help them out. Nice. And that audience build up for that night. That's cool because <laughs> I love the fact that without even thinking about this, like what you're doing is that you're you're pretty much like you're producing and you're leading a team for different shows, but yet you're still doing all the stuff in the background, which is I love it. <laughs> you, have, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can only deal with myself. You know what I mean? And I know what I got to do, but, you know, having to deal with with people and you know working with people and i'm sure you guys are all great it's nothing bad but those are a lot of moving pieces that you have to juggle yeah well i can thank canva pro for a lot of stuff that i've gone through streamyard has been an awesome asset too but like canva is my like go-to if i want to make reels if i want to make different intros i pay just 12.99 a month for canva pro mm -hmm. it just has helped so much with like the audio aspect of it like the different types of reels i can do the intros like i'm doing all of that mm -hmm. and that's cool and, and you're so, and you're learning as you go right yeah everything i've done with this show i've learned it from the ground up fuck yeah i love that i love that because i tell people all the time like I, I will point you toward where to go but you have to learn how to do it if you want to be successful or want to do something in this world like as far as content creation podcast i will show you the way but i'm not going to do it for you and a lot of people just stop or like oh this is too hard or i don't want to learn so they just give up on it well the crazy thing honestly there's a program here in new jersey it's called the connecticut school of broadcasting and you can get into this program it's 2500 dollars for like a 16 week course and they teach you all this stuff how to use soundboards how to do graphic designing and all that i got accepted into that program but i never went all the things that you see the show with the different intros and stuff like that I taught myself. That's Hell yeah. why I'm so damn proud of myself. Hell yeah. How far I've come into you. Yeah. That's, I love that because you have um, pride in your work. You have pride in what you you guys have done and established over the past you know, year, man. And a lot of people forget that, hey, I started here and now I'm here. And you are you have the gratitude and, and you understand that, hey, I'm learning as I go and you're still having fun, man. And I love seeing that. Oh, absolutely. I mean... Just the growth alone to shoot. I mean, if you want to count talk numbers real quick on Facebook alone, I'm at almost at my yearly goal in this August. Yeah. And it's 2022 at 257 followers. My goal for 2023 was to get up to 514. I'm at 436 right now. That's awesome. Just and it just turned August. That's awesome. And you and you guys, because of the consistency and the people and the quality that you guys have been bringing. So, with that being said. How do you keep the motivation going, man? Because Monday through Friday of y'all being on, like, being live, you know, because I, I know with, I mean, you work full time, you know what I mean? And you still come home and you do all this. So how does that motivation for yourself and everybody go with to keep this, you know, keep the train going? Yeah, well, because you see the growth. You see, like, people invested in it. And like you say, you see the people that say, hey, I was looking forward to seeing the show all night type of stuff just keeps you motivated yeah hey we're hitting strides we're hitting people we're affecting people people are now looking forward to seeing the show so we got to just keep pressing the play button the go button and striving forward i like that you say that because it's cliche but it's true the fact that people come back and say they enjoy it gives us that umph as a content creator just knowing the fact that what we're putting out and we enjoy doing that other people enjoy that gives us that umph to want to do more to keep going you know because it's cliche but it's true i appreciate everybody who clicks that button leaves a comment shares or anything i i truly greater uh, appreciate it because it's by choice it's a choice to come to your show 
it's a choice to drop that reaction it's a choice to hang out and not a lot of people will choose to do so so that the people that do i greatly appreciate and just how you're saying you do as well well how we always end the show every single night is i'll stroll i don't care if there's 500 comments i'll stroll through and read everyone's name off that left at least one comment that's dope Say, thank you for them coming in that's awesome I mean, yep it's true man because i mean we do it for fun but when somebody tells you you're doing a good job it fucking feels good you know what i mean because it, well, it it motivates you to keep going absolutely like it it hits that string in your heart like okay like I didn't think this was possible, but maybe it is. Like, I'm enjoying doing this, and now I have so-and-so saying, hey, you, that was a fun show tonight. Thank you for what you do. It's like, all right, now I got to make the show 10 times better. So now I got him saying it, and I'll have five other people saying it. Yeah, that's dope, man. With with the motivation of you guys, you know, keeping the striding going, like, how do you balance, you know, your work, you know, family relationships and things like that with your content creation going on? I mean... Luckily for me, works during the day. I get done at 8 o'clock every night. When you come home and start the show, it's kind of like that lull time in my day. I'm a single guy, no kids. All my sisters doing their own thing. My mom, dad, been 20 minutes from me. Like, occasionally I'll stop over there after work, see how they're doing, see my grandmother, say hi to them, so forth. And, like, my sisters, as much as I love them, I barely talk to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, all adults, so we all have our families, our lives. So, like, me being a single one, no kids, and never been married, is kind of my, to my advantage. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't have to worry about, like, working on my kids or making sure the wife's happy or stuff like that. I mean, granted, come September, I'm getting a new addition. I'm getting a puppy in my house. Hey! So that's gonna be, <laughs> I'm going to have a new friend to take care of. Yeah. That's about it. Like, that's I cool. Live by myself. Yeah. I live by myself, so it's easier to balance that one. Yeah. And that's good because even then, because you'd still have to have your personal time and, you know, because you can get burned out. You know, sometimes like taking a break and then, you know, you hardly do things on the weekend, you said, right? Maybe sometimes you guys stream on the weekends, but it's not like it's not doable, right? It's like you're not burning yourself out. You feel like you're at a good pace. I would say so. I mean, I've been approached about trying to do stuff on the weekends on a more permanent basis, and I've shot it down because, like, someone wanted to just jump on and do a Saturday night show. And I said, that's the one night I don't sit on the computer. Mm -hmm. Saturday night is the day I do nothing with the show. Nice. You disconnect. Disconnect for, like, a day and a half. That's good. I'm glad you say that because a lot of people don't. Like, I have a hard time of, like, keeping that door closed and not coming in here because I have a habit of just coming in here. All right, what can I do real quick? Let me make a reel. Let me look at, we'll see what's going on. By the time I fucking know it, here I am three hours later, sitting here when I said not to do it, because you have to disconnect. Yeah, like last night, I was up late working on my one year show. Next thing I know, I looked at the clock, it's three o'clock in the morning, I'm still down here. My show ended four and a half hours ago. <laughs> I think we can all relate to everybody who's a content creator out there, a musician or anything. It's like, fuck, I didn't want to do this. But here it is, time flew by, god dang it. <laughs> So, like I said, that, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I said uh, tonight, like I'm not on the show. I'll be producing. I might pop in towards the very end. Yeah. I told myself, you're upstairs by twelve o'clock tonight. No questions asked. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> That's good to have that hard stop. You know, I have a, a homie. Shout out to Tetsu Temple. He was like having a hard time. Me and him would always stay up late, just talking Discord all the time, and just recently, a while back, a couple weeks ago, he's like, you know, I'm gonna make myself get out. And just stop at a hard time because it doesn't his sleep and waking up in the morning and energy. And I've been doing that more as well because I start at work at five o'clock in the morning. So I need to make sure I'm well rested. I can't just stay up anymore working on shit. I need to off my stream, disconnect, and then, you know, go on with my day because I've done that with my streaming. I used to stream Monday through Friday and I was like, you know, I want to do other things. So let me start balancing out everything and for the past year and a half, I've been at a good stride because I know when to disconnect and, and I'm okay with it. And, and some, some people, people are, some people, yes. people, are, some people can't. So. Yep. Yeah. Cause I don't ever like, I felt one time in, in my, it was like about two years ago. I started feeling the burnout and I never felt like I would feel burnt out, but I felt it, you know, and my wife, she's like, Hey, you're getting burnt out. But having, 
somebody else pointing out to you because i don't want to go through the motions how you said being on the talk show going through the motions everybody's kind of like you're, you're just doing it just to do it. it's not fun i don't want to ever be that way you know i don't i want to have that energy and be motivated and have fun while i'm doing it how you said earlier i mean i give you credit for your video game streaming after a while my eyes get heavy when i play video games uh -huh. but to sit there and look at monitors <laughs> time and time again yeah it's like How's this man's eyes not like just exhausted? Oh, I'm sure my eyes will fall out here in the next couple of years or something. <laughs> <laughs> so with, uh, you know, you, you talk about the consistency, the different show types, working with the team, going at a year and a half already. You know, does being respected by other like peers or family members when it comes to this aspect in your life, do you care about being respected or taken serious when it comes to this? I mean, you always want people to be happy with your shows. I mean, some people are going to like a certain show, but they'll like another one. Like, as you're doing it in like a respectful manner, like instead of sitting there blasting people who are a part of it, because now these people are part of my family, helping me, like, you want full respect. You understand people have their opinions. I let people voice their opinions. But if you want to do it in a disrespectful way, I'm not going to reply back to you. I'm just going to, like, brush it off, act like it never happened. Mm -hmm. People want to show the respect and constructive criticism, as they call it. I'm all for it. I'll listen to it. I'll make the adjustment and make the show better. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of a lot of content creators and you know people that are musicians, co comedians, a lot of people that don't understand that aspect of life, especially with family. A lot of people that, like for the I've been doing this almost three and a half years, you know, and they're like, "What is he doing? What is Jimmy doing?" Like they don't know exactly what it is. Some people care, some people don't, but I've gotten to the point to where if people care and want to ask, I tell them, but if people don't care about what I'm doing, I can care less if they respect me or, you know, I just, if they, if I'm, you know, taking it serious, I know I'm taking it serious. I don't need to prove to anybody else. I'm taking it serious. That's all I care about. So if people love what I'm doing, then I know that it, you know, I am being respected and it's not that I need people's respect, but if I'm doing everything I'm doing, everything kind of falls into place. Plus, like, I, I'm starting to be like you in a way. Because whenever I see pictures of you outside, you always have some type of Jimmy Duke's merchandise on. <laughs> I've, actually, I've actually branched out and started making my own as well to help promote myself. Yeah. A, a lot of people, and I, I say that all the time. I'm glad you noticed that a lot of people say that. Hey, you're always wearing your shit. I'm like, bro, I'm trying to build a brand. I'm, I'm proud of what I've been doing. I'm not ashamed to sh show people that I do play video games. I do do podcasts. I'm doing this because I want to do it. And I'm proud of it. So I wear my shit to let people know. And if they ask, great. If they don't, I'm still wearing my stuff. It's like putting up a flag, you know? It's the same damn thing. I'm half inclined to actually came out and like, I should get a yard sign and put a front yard sign in my front yard. Hey, check out your neighbor in the basement. <laughs> Publicize me in my own neighborhood just to keep growing. Yeah. I think that, that a lot of people have a hard time marketing themselves or just telling people, like, I mean, it's not like you're out there passing cards out, you know what I mean? And just, it just, but you're proud. You're wearing a shirt right now. Hey, uh, this is my show. You want to check me out? Cool. If not, then hey, uh, you wear it to get questions. I know I wear my shirt. It's like Jimmy Duke's gaming. What do you do? I'm all, yeah, I do this if you're interested. And then I give them a, uh, a business card with a little QR code on there. And if they want to check me out, they could check me out. If not, I don't ever say, well, follow me on Facebook. Follow. I don't ever say that. If there's a conversation that's there and they're interested, then I'll offer the card. But if they're just asking just to ask, then I don't push for them to check me out. I've learned to do that because I feel like I'm trying to sell myself. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm only going to promote myself to somebody that might be interested. I'm not going to just sit on the corner and just pass out a bunch of flyers that people will throw on the floor. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I work with a guy who's one of my friends for many years since I've worked with him for 17 years now. Every time I walk by his deployment at work, hey, it's the basement show. And he'll tell like five people in the deployment, you know, he has a talk show Monday through Friday. That's dope. You should check it, uh, you should check it out. Like, everyone like, at work now knows me as the guy behind the camera, the basement show. So, like, I have a lot of people from my work checking it out. And they don't all follow, leave comments. But they checked out, hey, I watched your show last night. Yeah. You know, we were on point. That's so. cool. Yeah, and, it, and it's being okay with that because... That's one thing I started kind of doing at work, but not too much. I, I've told people what I do away from work. 
I try to separate it as much as possible, you know, because work is work and then my personal life is my personal life. But I've gotten to know some people at work and I let them know and they check me out, which is cool. You know what I mean? But it, it's 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 always a fine line that I'm not always just trying to tell everybody what the hell I'm doing. But if somebody's genuinely interested, I let them know about it. You know what I mean? So the the fact that um you guys got all this going on, what is the goal? Like what in an ideal life? ideal future you guys are uh, 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 almost a year in what what do you see yourself in another year and then like in five years oh well, at the rate we're going i mean first off i want to hit 500 followers on facebook i'm so close i was gonna hit 450 for august which would have been mind-blowing because we were on a stretch for a while adding like four or five new followers a day it was great so i would say probably for the year is just to finish off hit my year goal of 514 then keep growing yeah i mean this if someone executive or something minds up winds up popping in hey I like this tuesday night show or hey i like your sports talk i want to offer you a spot on such and such platform mm. but try because the bigger your name can get out there the more people that know it yeah but go through it all it's just to continue having fun interacting with people meeting new people entertaining people yeah you're saying all the right things. Yeah, you're saying all the right things because I always say people, I, I stop talking about what I'm doing and I just do it. You know, so people are like, oh, you're doing this or you're doing that. You didn't say anything. I'm like, I've gotten to the point to where like, I'm just gonna let my work do the, the talking for me. So I'm putting out podcasts. I'm putting out reels. I'm doing unboxings. I'm just doing it. I'm not, I, I stop telling people what I'm doing. And if they check it out, great. And maybe if I, somebody catches my types of videos, then it could lead to other opportunities, how you said. I mean, some people say, oh, I'm going to reach for a thousand followers. I want to become a partner and all that. That's all good and dandy. But if you can't get one person in your show, how do you expect to reach those milestones? Yeah. You got, you got to be positive. You got to be engaging with people. Like, I watch other shows that just sit there and talk for two, three hours. And people will be commenting, and they don't read any of these comments. Mm -hmm. These people are taking the time to watch your show, but you're not taking the time to acknowledge yourself. That's not fair to that people watching. But I'd rather get to know my audience and interact with my audience, have fun with my audience. Don't worry about, oh, we're just going to talk about this for two, three hours and don't care about anyone has to say. Yeah. That's not how you do it. Yeah. I like that back and forth. And it, and it's in every time I've talked to you about it, you're, I love how you're passionate about it and you speak about it because that's a goal of yours. Like, hey, I don't ever want to feel like you guys can't uh, talk to me or I don't see you kind of thing right yeah, yeah. You, don't want the name to, you don't want the name to get too big in your head that you're like okay you're a small person you don't mean nothing yeah everyone matters when it comes to doing talk shows video game streaming podcasting because they're investing their time to support you yeah i like how you said that because i always say it you know it's by choice them to click on that link it's by choice hitting that reaction it's by choice because a lot of people and then for me i'm not saying that that i do it all the time but sometimes i'll just scroll through shit I see people on and I'll just scroll because sometimes I'm too busy or I meant to, I don't meant to. So the people that do acknowledge me going in there, I always say, Hey, yeah, of course. What's up? What's up? Like that. And vice versa. When people drop comments on YouTube, I go back and reply or on Instagram or whatever. I always try to do my best to reply, to let them know that I see it. And I appreciate the time because they could easily scroll like I do. And then you get no view, you get no interaction. You know, you're not getting anything back and forth with your the audience that you're building. Absolutely. I mean, as, like, as I found out also through watching multiple streams, sometimes you build friendships in other ways. Like I was a, I jumped in Coach Clay's stream back in 2020 before I started my show. Just like interacting with people, met some friends through that. And most recently, I met one of those people in real life. That's dope. I was actually, I was actually a groomsman in his wedding. That's so cool. From a friendship I met on on Facebook. That's cool. So, That's cool. And I like how you say that because a lot of friendships that you just meet online and, you know, I've gone to this thing called the meetup in ATL for two years in a row. I met people online and meet them in person, which is cool. And then vice versa, I meet people in person and then we start following our friendship or start creating content or just keep in touch with each other through the social media. So... I like the fact that you said, hey, you're building connections. I mean, 
And it, I've the only streamers I've been have been through video calls, but it'd be awesome to actually like hang out with you guys and say, hey, our friendship has been on the computer for X amount of years. Why don't we just try to be friends outside of this? Mm -hmm. So, I, I I like that that you say that because I have because sometimes it, it is it not everybody will mesh together, but sometimes like I've gone to to know people that we play completely different games. We're on different levels. But when we were talking and hanging out, the connection was there. Like, hey, we, we could be cool and we it could lead to a friendship. But we have nothing else in common other than we met at a, a meetup or we both stream. You know, and it started there. I mean, I always say, if you show me respect, you're going to get respect back. And for years, I've always popped in different people's streams to show them support and all that. And now I'm starting to see those same people I've always showed support come back and show me support mm -hmm. which is so it's un, like unexpected but it's totally awesome yeah of course because you're doing it because you want to it's not like you're trying to get anything and in, and in, in, uh trying to get anything back but the fact that they acknowledge you and they've seen you and they they show that support is dope like a couple weeks ago just for a regular show and all of a sudden i get a notification on my stream like i got my first ever twitch raid nice I was like, holy shit, like, it was by Coach Clay. I shout him out, like, I was like, I, he didn't say nothing in the chat that night, but I was like, Coach, thank you so much. Like, you're so supportive and thankful for those people who you helped blossom their shows now coming back and paying the favor back and sending new viewers over to check you out. That's dope. And that's how it is, too, because I always say, um, and this is just me, and I, and a lot of people can, you know, can agree with me or not. I don't just tell people to go, go see this person, go see that person, and... You know, I'm not the follow for follow guy or telling everybody's badass. Go see them. The people that I genuinely like and follow and I tell other people, hey, they might not be your cup of tea, but I like them because and then I'll, you know, I'll let people know because it's true. Like, I don't want to just I don't want to be just telling everybody to go check everybody out if I don't even like them myself. Yeah, or like I told <laughs> like I told, uh, you know, Doris, you popped in his show before, streamed her before. I'm in a group chat with him, uh, a couple other people. I said, I'm going to go record a podcast with Jimmy Duke Jamie. And Matt's like, that's freaking awesome. I was like, yeah, he's a great person. He was like, I agree. Like, check him out when I can. He also shows me support. So when you're a streamer, you enter a big family. Mm -hmm. and as streamers, we're one family. Sure, we not may not always see eye to eye or agree with what everyone is doing, but we're always going to show that person support because mm -hmm. they're showing us support. Yep. Yeah, and I, we all try to do that the best we can. You said earlier, we're not always in each other's things, but the people that I genuinely respect and support, they know without me having to be in there all the time. You know, they they know, and I feel the same from them because I know people that never come into my streams, never come to my stream, but check out every Instagram, all my reels, all my YouTube stuff, and vice versa. I have people in my streams all the time that don't check out the other things, but I see them and I respect it because I see them going out of their way to try to support me in different ways that they can. I mean, I there's people that I know don't can't always watch your show or don't always drop that comment. But I'll get a message from them like a day or two later. Hey, I missed your show, but I went back and rewatched some of it. It was pretty. It was pretty badass. Nice. The fact that they're taking the time to go back and watch something old since they missed it, it still means a lot. Yeah. That's dope. I love that because I have I have some people that will watch an old stream and they'll comment throughout the whole thing like, oh, shit. Like they actually sat and watched an old stream and I go, I'll get the comments and I'll be like, hey, man, thanks for checking it out. It's like, oh, that one part, that was hilarious. Then like 30 minutes later, they add another comment. They're actually watching the stream, even though it's not live. They're putting their comments. So I appreciate that shit, man. So the fact that you've been doing this with the team, holding it down the basement show with Mr. Nast aka nasty nate <laughs> what are some tips and some advice that you would give to somebody when they're first started nothing that that you would change anything but what are some things that if somebody's listening or watching like hey if you have an idea look into this don't do that do this or do that from your personal experience what can you spit some game for some people oh my first thing is write it down so you don't forget it <laughs> there's been many times that someone has ideas and then you forget to write it down, and then you go back to think about it, like, crap, like, crap I, what was my idea? I forgot to write it down. So always have a notepad nearby. 
No pen and paper, your best friend. I love that. Business. I love that. That's such a simple thing. Go ahead. Yeah, that's a good one. And then after you get started with it, the biggest thing that I have known self to say to myself is be patient. If you stay consistent, if you have the content, people will come. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither are shows, podcasts, streaming, nothing. You got to be patient, be consistent with what you're doing. I love that. Those are so simple because I know when like me recently more than ever before, I think of podcasts and I think of topics and I think of people and automatically on my phone, I have a notepad or it has people's names that I could potentially talk to or I have topics and I just need to put people's names next to them. So I'm glad you say that because I used to always think, oh, I'll remember and I'll fucking forget. <laughs> so <laughs> the fact that you said that it is very important. Just write it down, especially as a content creator or for musicians, comics, whatever, you're writing stuff down all the time, right? And then the fact that you said the patience, I think that's the biggest thing for a lot of people in this this now, now, now world. If they don't get what they want, then I got fuck this. I mean, the notebooks and the pen, all that come from me wanting to be a writer. Since I was in second grade, I've always said I'm going to be a writer. So when it comes to notebooks and pens, I have about 50 notebooks in my house, binders and stuff like that. Because I'm always thinking of something, I always want to write it down. Mm-hmm. People look at me like I'm crazy, but when you have that writer's mindset of wanting to be a writer, you have to get your thoughts down on paper. Yeah, I'm glad you say that. And with the uh, the patience thing, man, that's that's such a big thing. And I'm glad you say that because it takes people to find that for themselves in whatever way they're going. Because I'm doing all this, I'm doing all that, and nothing's happening. You know, and they they get impatient. I mean, like I said, it's not built in a day. I mean, you can try and try. You may get lucky and go from, say, 20 followers or 100 in one day. But that's because you're, you're patient, you're interacting with people, you're engaging. Yeah. But when you don't have that patient mindset and you're like, okay, only one person watched tonight. I want to keep doing this. You have to. Mm-hmm. The second you give up, people are going to message you. Hey, I thought you were doing your thing tonight. Oh, well, it didn't go so well, so I I thought differently about it. Yeah. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. Day by day, keep getting better and keep striving for greatness. I love that. I love that. Such quick, like, small little things, but they're they're very important. With that being said, man, let everybody know where they can find you. What is your program schedule during the week? Uh, let us know where we can all find you out, man. Well, just type in the, the Basement Show with Mr. Nas, K-N-A-S-T, no Y. Um... <laughs> On Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Also on Kick, I haven't jumped over there yet. I think uh, StreamYard hasn't accepted the stream key yet. But main platforms are Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. We're also on TikTok. I put some different reels up there. I have gotten into making show reels once in a while with what the fuck moments from the show, part of my language. But like, no, no, yeah. Something that makes people more engaged in it. Yeah. So we'll, by Monday through Friday, and usually 9 o'clock. You try to go 90 minutes to two hours. We, like I always say, my favorite quote is there's a show for everybody. That's cool. So give us, uh, give us a rundown on 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 a what day and what shows during the week. Okay, well Monday night you have Sports Gladiators, which is all sports. And then coming fall, we're just going to be a lot of trash talk because we're making a basement show, fantasy football league. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, ten people involved in that. Um, Tuesday night. Is entertainment night. It's my two friends, Morgan and Shannon. They usually play games. They tell twisted tales. They just have fun hanging out. I mean, that's cool. Yeah, uh, it's a female show, but yeah. they have they have cool humor, so it adds to the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wednesdays right now is called TNT, which is TV and trivia night. The show that Ron came up with. We play different trivia's and stuff. That show might be changing in the near future again. Not sure yet. Um, Thursday night, you gotta do an open mic concept sometimes, or I have my friend Reb Grimm on, and he has a very mature show, so we say 18 plus, put the kids to bed and come hang out. <laughs> and Friday night is a show we've been doing since the show started. Back in August, it's called Friday Night Movie Night, where we just have a full out movie discussion for two hours. Nice. Whether it be movie soundtracks, actors... Uh, top 100 list, whatever. We just 
get back and have fun. Yeah, you truly do have a show. There might be a show for anybody in that range of, of, of topics, man. That's awesome that you do that, man. Thank you so much for your time, man. I, I see you. Um, it's crazy to think that I've known you for about a year and a half. You've already been at this for a year, man. And I'm proud of what you've accomplished in this time. And uh, you're st you're steadily doing what you're supposed to. And hopefully it leads to all the success that you're that you're looking for, man. Day by day and enjoy and do what we do. I mean, that's the fun part. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate your time once again. All the descriptions will be down there. All these links to go check them out on the different platforms, guys. I like them. You might like them. All the different types of show that they have available. It, it doesn't hurt to go check them out for sure, man. Before we get out of here, do you want to say anything else, man? Want to shout anybody out? Anything like that? Uh, just shout out to Jimmy Duke for having <laughs> me on. Cycling the Doc for bringing us the four friendship we've uh, formed. And just shout out to everyone who gives the time to us tiny streamers. It means a lot. We don't expect it, but it is greatly appreciated. Hope to see one of my shows soon. I know some of the people from Jimmy Duke's shows have come over and checked it out. Anyone is welcome to join. It's a show for everybody. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Thank you so much for your time once again, man. We'll keep in touch. Make sure you guys go check these out on Spotify, YouTube, or iTunes. All the videos, all the audios are there, guys. Make sure you guys look out for more different topics we have on our show. We have all different types of people that we're having on here throughout the year, man. Until next time, for me and myself and Mr. Nass, peace out, guys. Y'all have a good one.